What's happening? This is Ryan Dawkins, and you're tuning in to The Law. I brought out the best of me. We got it. We got it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Loft. If you guys are new, please like, comment, subscribe. And if you're not new, welcome back. Today, I have a very, very special guest. He is a, an entrepreneur at heart. He is the founder of Balance MMA, the co-founder of Tattoo T, the author for Yoga for Fighters. He's also a six-degree Gracie black belt. Ladies and gentlemen, someone you do not want to mess with, the <laughs> jiu-jitsu matrix, Phil Miglieris. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. No worries. This is so cool. Nice. How's the intro? Good. That intro was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate. <laughs> Makes you. me sound slightly cool. <laughs> you are pretty. You're a cool ass dude, man. We uh, we chopped it up a lot um, earlier, like last week, and um, got to sit with you, and then your brother Rick came in. He's Thought he was gonna kill me when he walked in. <laughs> that was hilarious, man. The look on your face. <laughs> he walked in with a rig for watch, and you walked in with a black hoodie. Just no, no facial expression, and then he just he puts his hood down. And he's just the nice dude in the world. So, um, but uh, yeah, no, dude, it was really nice. And like, kind of hit on before is like something I really value is like relationships as well as you know people who are good people. You know, and and you know Agree. being with Trevor and Justin Rosenberg. Um, being able to like every all of them connected me to you they all brought they all knew your name they all brought me brought you up to me um and uh it was just really nice to just like actually be with you in the flesh chop it up with you learn about you know balance mma learn about the tattoo tea we'll get into um and yeah and just do just kick it with you I, I it was really nice to just be a part of it and hang out for a little bit so i appreciate that thank you it was good to have you man yeah so i also wanted to ask as well i always ask my guests right away how was your day? <laughs> My day has been good so far. Nice and early. Hit yeah. a little bit of yoga, a little bit of tatsu tea, and here I am ready to there you go. chat it up a little bit. There you go. And I know uh, we'll get into a little bit of your background before we get to the presents. I know there's so much to unpack, but mm -hmm. um, you went to Drexel, correct? Went to Drexel, yeah. Yeah, I had a... Uh, so Drexel is a school that has trimesters. Mm -hmm. So it went right along with my lifestyle at the moment, which was competing on literally the world stage i would compete or teach around the the world or i would go somewhere like brazil or india or you know i was in all these places for more or less like three months at a time so i would go train you know yeah do that sort of thing and then um then i would go back to school so I would yeah, back and forth back. so i'd go three months here then three months school three months That's here nuts. three months school so i went to school for about 10 years <laughs> really yeah because i knew what my primary focus was it was you know like you said i uh, i grew up in an entrepreneurial family i knew i was most likely going down that road and i do enjoy it it's such a fun thing mm -hmm. so the traditional college life um four years go to work that sort of thing I, it wasn't really in the cards for me so right. um i figured i would do something with jujitsu and business and um yeah, so it's a great school. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> you got to travel abroad for for years, and you uh, you were doing jujitsu since you were really young, right? Yeah, super young. My brother and I, and a group of like eight other people, were like the first ones on the East Coast to ever do jujitsu. That's crazy. And um, and I knew that, and I knew it would be big, and that's why I traveled. That's why I trained with the best people. Like my brother and I were in an instructors program with the Gracie family, more specifically, uh, Elio Gracie, who was the, you know, the yeah. 90 year old father of the family. And we, uh, we trained in California and, uh, every day I spent with the Gracie, just like just mm. eating that up, just yeah. as much experience as I can could there. And then bring it back to Philly, bring it to the world. Yeah. So that was, that was, that. I was so young that no one knew. So I felt like it was my place. Like a pioneer. Uh, didn't, intend to right, be that way right, but right. you know i was just training i wanted to learn myself and right. get good and be good enough to teach and impart it the way it was supposed to be done right. that's kind of how i am with everything even mm -hmm. the beverage yeah i'm like i i just gravitate and somehow end up in a room with the best people in that sort of area yeah literally everything yoga jujitsu 
uh, my marketing life. I was around some of the best marketers on the planet. And now with beverage, I'm around some of the best yeah. beverage owners or investors or right. just the people that, um, that, um, yeah, you can push it that forward. the industry has to offer. And yeah. honestly, something I picked up on, um, and you were like my dead giveaway is, um, cause I you know, recently started club 25 and all that. And I've learned that energy is everything. Oh yeah. How you come off to people, what you like, you know, just ha- get the kind of person you are, your intentions and everything like that. And like when your energy is good, everything else just comes so natural. And I feel like you, like you kind of were telling me, you were telling me who your people were and like who your connects were and just in terms of like each industry and they were all like great people. And it's like, oh, I think it all stems back to who you are as a human being. And you know, when, when it comes to business and, and practicing good business, I feel like when you do good, it comes back. You know, when you give out good, it comes back to you in some type of way. So it's kind of something I've personally learned, um, mm-hmm. you know, just from like just being so new to, to the business side of things and, and starting a business. Um, but random said jujitsu question. Mm-hmm. Um, so for people who don't know, who is the Gracie family? So, <clears throat> um, the Gracie family is a Brazilian family, the largest sports family in the world, probably still. Um, they go back to uh, Brazil a mm-hmm. hundred years ago, almost. They started jujitsu there. And um, so it went from Japan to Brazil. And uh, a Japanese champion and teacher went to Brazil and taught the Gracie brothers, the original generation of Gracie brothers, which is, uh, one of them was Elio Gracie, who I practiced with. Mm. Um, he passed, uh, about, you know, over 10 years ago in his nineties. Mm. And, uh, they taught, uh, that group of brothers and he was the smallest brother and most tenacious and, you know, someone who I still look up to every day. Like I think about how tough he was at a, about 140 pounds. Right. Oh, wow. So he adapted jujitsu to, to suit a smaller person against a bigger person. So that's how he changed the world. So mm. he took this art that traditionally was meant for, you know, powerful sports sort of guy and adapted it just so everyone, <clears throat> kid, woman, smaller man, <clears throat> um, so they could do it. Mm. Interesting. And so it went from Brazil to America via the UFC. So his son was invented the UFC, Horian Gracie. Mm. And Horian Gracie is the same um, person who opened up the academy in California that we trained at. So we did our teacher training under their tutelage. Oh, so nice. Elio Gracie, so we were at the top. So that's what I was saying earlier. Like I always, still still today, I wanna, I wanna know who's at the top. If I can train with them, be yeah. with them, listen, yeah. work for them for free, I'll do whatever it yeah, takes to, yourself be, to be company. in that. Yeah. So I did that. And um, so the UFC started 93. It blew up. Unbelievable. Like yeah. Hoist Gracie, who was just here with us a couple of weeks ago. Um, he uh, He's a superstar of, you know, he was the first ultimate champion. He was the first UFC champ. And, yeah. um, you know, I think he did about four or five times. And uh, really changed the world in America. So... Um, Every one of their kids, cousins, everybody in their family trains. Yeah. And we have a little tiny bit of that, the Miglarisa. So all of our cousins train. We have mm-hmm. many black belts that are already in our family. Yeah. So, but uh, we would, it would be another hundred years until we ever caught up to, yeah. to them. <laughs> you had uh, every color of the rainbow up on your wall, every, every belt. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, that's a lot of years. 30, I think this April is 36 years. You've been tra- a lot of time training for 30. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of dedication for but sure. But I love it. I man, I still love it. I still feels fresh. Um, mm-hmm. I like helping other people. So the gyms, you know, now thank thankfully after this pandemic, yeah. we're all packed again. Right, yeah. So we're able to share with a lot of people. Yeah, and we'll we'll get into balance on May in a second. But mm-hmm. I'm curious as to what um jujitsu, the art of jujitsu is like mm-hmm. kind of taught you um internally. I think some of this stuff I had as a kid i was always a patient kid yeah um and that actually helps in jiu-jitsu when you're patient when you're like emotionally 
you know, we talk about emotional intelligence. We all have to learn different parts of emotional intelligence. I had the patience by nature, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, that was the first vibration that I, you know, was able to understand quickly, but also like timing, timing in business, timing on the mat, hugely important. So it's not like necessarily how powerful you are, even how fast you are. Mm -hmm. You can be so fast you miss. Right. Timing is super important. And then the recognition of what the proper timing is, that's the other thing that you gain. But that's, you know, I think we were talking about the other day, my major interest is in mastery of things, not necessarily like to monetize or to, you know, do it to be a big shot. Or I like the mastery of a business or a move or that interests me so much. Yeah. So that section of it, I get a lot of that from jujitsu. Um, and also to the technical side, I like it, Mm -hmm. you know? So if you apply, you know, this move done at this perfect, in this perfect way, yeah. Results in this, you know, and then you can copy and paste that template to business, to life. Right. You know? So I I like the technical side of jujitsu. Nice. Now power, strength, speed, all that stuff is important. But um, if it's not based in, you know, some sort of technical or, um, you know, you want to stick to that theme, like be technical. And then if you have these other attributes, you can. Yeah. So like the patience part of it really, um, you know, I think it was natural for me and the other stuff I, I definitely work for every day. Yeah. And you and your brother went into it pretty much together, correct? Yeah. 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 He says he started five years or three years after me. He started the moment I started. No. Right rewind even more i come from four generations of boxing and fighters so we grew up kind of throwing our hands around so he was already like he was a natural you know his nickname is the animal he's a natural animal like yeah he was a beast when he was a kid and so let's say i was three years ahead of him in jujitsu his aptitude for it he got it like that mm. you know he caught could, up quick. oh yeah caught up quickly yeah. he's a technical genius you know yeah. um so yeah, but we both started as kids, and then um, he was also naturally gifted as an athlete. You know, he's probably one of the strongest people I ever felt on the mat. Um, you know, at two hundred ten pounds or so, or two hundred fifteen, he has the power of like a, yeah. you know an <laughs> ox. Yeah. Uh, but also the speed and the timing too. And as a teacher, he's brilliant as a teacher too. So um, it's really cool how that works out, though. Being yeah. Able to, do you find that? doing all these types of things like with your brother do you think that like really amplifies your enjoyment of it oh yeah for sure yeah yeah as i like teaching too and then discussing things and i like using balance the gym as a lab yeah you know because no one's absolutely right you know right. so we get a chance to say okay this is what's been done in the past let's take that you know uh 100 years ago this was the correct way but you know my love of technology puts my brain in there like that's the 1.0 where's the two and the three and the four let's keep you know evolving so what i say oftentimes at balance we have a balance yeah tradition versus evolution they should both be studied and respected Hmm. and um you know we do that sort of stuff so it's fun that you have to have other people other body types other temperaments other you know yeah and and you know speaking of balance 1.0 Um, where did, you know, when did that start and where did the idea come from to like start your own jujitsu MMA gym in Fishtown? So, um, it's going on 22 years now. And, uh, so I had been training at the, what was like a grace. So let's rewind to like more or less 1988. Um, a friend of ours, Steve Maxwell, opened up a gym exercise which was a fitness gym it hosted the gracie the very first gracie affiliate in america and the gracies came out and taught us and um we grew i would go back and forth and i was a child then you know right. i wasn't an adult teaching classes at that point right, i was a right. kid i was literally the kid in class yeah and uh that got bigger and bigger 93 hits ufc gets bigger and bigger my uh, brother and I go out to the Gracie Academy in Torrance, California to train with the Gracies, to learn the teaching method, how to run a gym, all that great stuff. Um, 
Um, the gym here, Steve uh, ends up moving away. We move away from the gym and start our own gym, Balance Studios, in 2002. Um, we also uh, continued the oldest Gracie affiliate um, at Balance. So technically, we have the oldest Gracie affiliation in America. Technically, we've mm -hmm. you know we've done we've been a part of it and managed it for. It was a long time. Yeah, eighty eight. <laughs> yeah, Would, yeah when I think about ninety, like it became an official right. like spot to train in under the Gracies, like recognized yeah. by the Gracies. But there were there were no other ones back in the day. So um, <clears throat> I started my gym because I was a yoga kid. I started yoga when I was eight. I thought it was super important. Uh, I gained like this following in Philly. I was like the was like the only authorized instructor in Ashtanga yoga like around. Definitely the only oh, wow. one in Philly. Yeah. But, you know, more or less up up and down the East Coast. Um, our friends in New York were, and um, Philly, it's kind of me and uh, a friend of mine, Joji, that were That's authorized pretty, instructors. Pretty so I took both of those things, the jujitsu and fighting and yoga, and put them in the one spot, called it Balance Studios. Mm. We started on, in Center City, one spot, small spot. <clears throat> everyone jokingly said that uh, you would have to, it was a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And when we first opened, you would have to walk through this dark section <laughs> that was like called the bat cave and then you yeah. open the door and then there are mats and people, yeah. you know, um, always smiles on everyone's faces when you got in there, but like, yeah. you know, getting in there was a little <clears throat> daunting. <laughs> um, then we got our own entrance evolved, you know, yeah. and then um, the, so the, the gyms that you see now, so we have three gyms in Philly, um, you'll take notice that the branding is on point, you know, the mats are the same color, yeah. the same, you know, um, as of about in about two weeks, they'll all be, um, perfectly branded, almost exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So we're, as you saw, we were doing a little bit of construction. Yeah. We have some updates in, in, you know, just with, uh, the Philly balance studios gyms. So, um, yeah, so we went from there to what you what you see today over you know a long period of time, and have serviced. Man, I think on our anniversary, our twentieth anniversary, I think we did the math like we had like thirty thousand students come through or something like really? something like that. Yeah, wow. You've had some some pretty notable students as well. I know we talked about Andre Petrovsky and and some of some some other amazing students. Like, who uh, are there any students that are like? Obviously, every student is is great in their own way, but like you see mm. some notable, you know, figures. Are there any any notable figures in the sport you've like directly been in contact with, trained with, hmm. trained? Well, by far, her I think our most famous student is uh, Lex Friedman, mm. the F Lex Friedman podcast, and yeah, he. Uh, if you don't know him, go check that out. It's super cool, um, and he got his black belt from us, and you know still keep in uh, pretty pretty close contact and he's uh he's really taken off he, he took off too because he was on joe rogan's podcast like six or seven times he's yeah. friends with joe and it just went pew. yeah it's crazy. crazy yeah but other athletes so we've always helped athletes you know like early on mma who's early that's most notable probably frankie eggert mm -hmm. he would come out and you know come train and Frankie's a super, super nice guy and was always humble, but just a beast. And, yeah, you know, became what he became in the UFC. And then recently, like Joe Pfeiffer and mm -hmm. Andre Petrusky, you know, they, they've come through balance. Um, during the pandemic, we needed to discontinue the MMA program, which yeah. we didn't really have a big one. We just always supported our friends. Right. So we, we really just teach uh, jujitsu. And um, so the jujitsu side is like, you know, we teach like the street self-defense side of it yeah. and then the sport. And then you would go into the MMA portion, but you need a whole different facility and, you know, it's a whole different thing. Right. So they needed a little bit more. So those guys all train together. They train, um, you know, with some of the best guys. Like literally, I think all the best guys in the region, all, yeah. they have to train in the same room. They have to. Right. Um, Sean Brady is a Philadelphia yeah. guy. Um just you know i saw his last fight man it was so great it was he's so a cool. dog man. i'm all about philly mma so it's cool that's awesome um yeah so th those sort of guys and you know yeah they're that's, yeah 
that, that's awesome. It's like a you can definitely tell like the scenes growing, especially in Philly, like the oh, yeah. the talent and like the people. You know, there's tons of gyms like Marquez and, and all that, but the talent's definitely growing. And like, is there anything that you? Because I, I tell you're a very patient, observant guy. Is there anything you've taken from these these athletes when you're training them? And like, because obviously it takes talent but also takes a lot of stuff that's internal and things that are that that you've learned over the years to be great is there anything you've 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 been able to learn as a teacher from some of these guys that have you know come into your gym um so what like what i learned from these guys is that they can get over whatever that hump is in their life Mm -hmm. you know they can overcome and express that with you know competing in mma or competing in jujitsu you know, we all fight demons. Some fight more than others. And to be able to get over that sort of stuff, you know, fight their way out of it, if you will, and overcome. The same way you have to do, you have to do that within a fight. There could be down moments in the fight where you feel like you're down in the dirt and losing and you come out of nowhere and then, you you know. Yep. So you have to be able to take those rides. So the best guys always have that ability, ultimately, to take that ride, you know, the ups and downs. Same thing in entrepreneurship. You have to know how to ride that, you know, mm-hmm. ride that train of emotions. You know, right. every can't win every day. Yeah. Is there anything? I mean, is there anything in your entrepreneurial, you know, slash jujitsu, you know, you know, your entire journey? Are there are there some demons you've had to really overcome that you can today say you're thankful you did and thankful you stuck with it? Is there any demons you had to really overcome? Yeah, sitting right here, it's me. Yeah, you know, getting over myself, wanting to like chill out like this, laying on a sofa, <laughs> hanging out. But no, I fight. You know, more or less laziness. A lot of people say like that's ridiculous, but yeah, I want to lay on the couch, chill, right. just read a book. Mm-hmm. But you have to get up and go. So a lot of it is a t- fight with myself. You know, right. And then, um, so I always go back to reasons why I have to do this p- bit of paperwork, or I have to call the, the things. Sometimes you don't want to do tedious stuff. Why you have to do them? You yeah. know. Um, there are certain situations where I never want to find myself and I also learn from others and their stories and where things, places where I never want to end up and I won't, you know? Mm. So I think declarations are hugely important in your life. So if I make a declaration to always do this or to become that or what, I'm dead serious about it, you know? Right. So when I set out for something, I'm, you know, that's all I do. I wake up. That's all I think about. Yeah. Is there, and that's, that's amazing. And like, I feel like everyone reaches that point. Uh, in their life and is there ever a point where you had to take a leap of like you had to trust your gut you had to trust oh, every single one yeah yeah every single one mm. so rewind again yeah so so i need to tell you this so when i was 17 this is a big part of my life i got into a car accident i got hurt i hurt my hips i you know almost took my life and the thing that i mention always is that it didn't and it's not the worst story you ever heard about someone being in a car wreck, but it was significant for me because it put me in a place where I had to like lay down and rest for more or less than a, like more like about a year almost looking up at a ceiling being left with only my brain, you know, mm-hmm. for most of the time I was, you know, people were taking care of me, of course, but, um, it allowed me to be realistic about the next part of my path. So 17 and on, mm-hmm. right. And I just made, going back to declaration, I said, you know, I'm going to go full in on jujitsu and yoga at this point. <clears throat> and throughout that whole thing, I, I studied business and marketing and photography and videography and things like that. Things I enjoy. Yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full in. <clears throat> if I mention jujitsu to somebody, they're like, what? What is this? Yeah. Mention this sort of yoga. They're like, what? Mm -hmm. So it was very, nobody knew what it was, but I had a gut feeling that everyone should. And I knew it would be big. Mm. Like I knew in my gut, I had no data. There was no (laughs) projections, nothing like that. I just had a gut feeling and you know, it's still the reason why I do it today. It's the exact reason why I would always do it for free for somebody. Mm. I love jujitsu. I love yoga. I think they're two hugely important things to do for anybody in any endeavor. So um that's pretty cool so going on this tatsu tea mm-hmm. uh experience yeah. of mine right now started as a gut feeling when my partner todd came to me and said hey what do you think about this mm-hmm. you know and once i had his prototype <clears throat> the way i felt 
was the feeling that I want to share with everybody else on the planet. And you could maybe relate because you had it a few times. And yeah. it gives you this like uplifting feeling because of matcha and the electrolytes and the vitamins. And yeah, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to leave it to the scientists to really <laughs> tell you why that happens, but it happens. Right. So it's such a great feeling. Um, and it's, you know, the other side of things for me, you know, I'm very cautious what I put my body and it's all natural. That's the kicker. So right. It's, yeah. that, that's the fun part. So the gut feeling about something like you have to be nuts to go into beverage. Yeah. I have more. I'm 47 years old. It's more likely for me to win the UFC than it is to win in beverage. Hmm. Uh, can we say that again? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's for anyone who watches <laughs> So UFC. Dana White, you know, I have more of a chance to win the UFC yeah. than I do uh, winning in beverage. Mm. But that's why I wake up. So right. we have let's have fun with this thing. So the more people it touches, the better. So the gut feeling, it comes with good intentions, you know, like I, I really feel like it'll it'll help the world. So, mm. you know, I we'll see what happens. Yeah. You want to provide value. And, and so you obviously you started Balance and you've you were a six degree black belt and you just recently started tattoo T, mm -hmm. which is, is a, I will let you speak on it, but it's something that, I mean, it's speaking some, of it. I, I need some, <laughs> yeah, show them I the, wanna, uh, show them the can. Oh, too. you want to check it out? Yeah. So it's the tattoo T. Which camera's here? This one right here. That, there we go. Yeah. So tattoo T. Tattoo T. So, it, uh, it's a matcha performance beverage. So our mission is to just give an alternative to coffee and energy drinks for performance-based activities. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be yeah. uh, waking up and reading. It could mm -hmm. be hitting the treadmill. It could be fighting some young guy like I do every day. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, I'm 47, but I still, you know, I train with everybody. Yeah. And uh, more or less my use case <clears throat> is either early morning podcast with you yeah. or uh, to wake me up or... Um, you know, basically training, I mean, training yeah. yoga and jujitsu. Right. So it's enough of a pick me up to, to, to do that sort of thing without feeling like there's zero crash here because of matcha. Right. Uh, coffee. If I do it before I train, I don't, I'd never ever feel good. And I can't do that before I do yoga either. Yeah. I've, I've never been like a coffee guy. And like when I'm out DJing and you know, I'm drinking, I'm hungry over the next morning, I'm networking and you go to after hour spots. So I'm up late and like, yeah, I've been trying drink. I've been drinking these, you know, he gave me a few of them and they've been really like helping with what, with that, my ice bath and I all that. I got to tell you this story with the origin of this thing. It's hilarious. Yeah. I, I need yeah. to know <laughs> as an entrepreneur, I need to know this. Um, but yeah, no, nah, man, this stuff's great. And like, and you're really like, you're, you're really getting this out into the markets and, and getting into people's hands, um, <coughs> oh, which me. is great now, nah, which is great. And, uh, and it tastes, it tastes great. And I love drinking it. So it's like, you know, and that's how I feel too. Like if I enjoy something, I love to share it with the world. So like, hopefully, you know, people can check out Tatsu Tea and, and, you know, what do you, where, where can you get them at your local gyms? And So, um, for now, so we're in Philly, mm -hmm. you can get them. So we did uh, a couple different types of launches just because of the nature of this business, you know? Right, right. So we launched in the jujitsu world nationwide via our website. So Tatsu Tea com. Mm -hmm. So you can get a case. Actually, our earliest supporters are our monthly subscribers. So, mm. you know, they get it every month. They provide us with capital where we can buy more and sell right. more to other people. Right. And it takes a long time for this to be a profitable thing. Mm -hmm. So they're helping us get to the next step. So they're part, our, our monthly subscribers are part of our story. They're fueling our story. It's, right. it's awesome. And then, yeah. you know, if you guys are watching, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and secondly, I just had a very simple launch um idea i was like let's launch on our street mm. so the headquarters of tatsu tea it's a fish town philly based biz business let's launch on frankfurt Ave, the main you know main drag and then my uh my gym is also you right. know balance studios is also on frankfurt Ave, so we've been yeah. here for a sec yeah you're like i was gonna say you're right down like right by johnny brenda's garage um uh, frankfurt hall all the fish town originals are, yep. are right there yeah you know, i'm rita yoga's down the street frankfurt hall which started really the whole thing johnny brenda's before that but you know i'm in that little yeah you're in the mix for sure in, it definitely in the cool mix over there so <laughs> those are all our friends too and they've been super supportive with the launch but i figured let's um you know let's launch on our street we have a lot of support and it just serves as a, like a microcosm for beverage net nationwide. So yep. our whole job will be in marketing and the way we speak supportive to our retailers, you know? Mm -hmm. So even at my gym, you can't get a can of Tatsu tea at my gym. And there's a reason. Um, we sell cases out of there like crazy, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't compete with my retailers. 
So my retailers are across the street from me next door. And um, my job is to send people over there to, to buy, buy cans of Tatsu tea. I like that. So that's, you know, that, that's, like that's that. what I thought. And it's, it's sustainable. Yeah. And, um, and I have a really good time with all of our retailers. I get that, you know, we collab on Instagram posts yeah. and, you know, at the same time, nationally, we're doing collabs. We just did a hilarious one. Mm-hmm. With a gentleman named Evan, if you go to our Tatsu Tea on on Instagram, yeah. it's, it's there right now. He did a he's a comedian, oh, nice. and he did a, a kind of a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu spoof, oh, nice. <laughs> and then he's actually drinking a can of Tatsu in the middle, and it's just hilarious. Um, yeah. And I don't know, I might like the last time I checked, I think there was like fifty thousand views on it. It, nice. it, it really like got around. So yeah. just listen, it's total fun. Yeah. At this stage of my career, I just want to be involved in fun things. And yeah, and I want to collaborate and yeah, and, and provide value for people, which is which is huge. And and the valuable part is obviously the origin and how it started and how did it, how did this whole thing start? So, each founder in Tatsu is a jujitsu person too. So okay. one is my brother, and my other partners are all we're all jujitsu. So at the mm. heart of it, it's a I don't know. I think it's also a fun business with friends, right. but it became like, uh, you know, it escalated very quickly and it is escalating very even yeah. quicker these days. Yeah. So people across in the West coast are enjoying it. That's, mm. you know, we didn't think that would happen Yeah. so fast. Um, it started, I think more or less about five years ago. Uh, my friend Todd, who I've known in jujitsu for a long time since the nineties or so, uh, came to me with a packet of Tatsu tea. And it was a packet that you would put into a uh, uh, container, shake it up. And yeah. So I tried it. He was like, you got to try this. I really love the effects of it, you know. But I, what I thought would, been, would be a little bit more important is to bring it to a ready-to-drink solution like this. And I happen to be, so I have a history in marketing too for like 22 years. It was always my side gig, some Mm -hmm. marketing gig. And I've always been fascinated with tech. And Yeah, you love the side hustles, man. I have to. (laughs) Well, I didn't think jujitsu would work. I I was like, man, I have to do something on the side. If I get injured or hurt, I have to have this another thing just as a backup to, you know, raise a family and do that whole thing. Yeah. So I've always thought in that way, you know. And then now jujitsu works and hopefully this beverage will. But, um, so I had been working as a, a, you know, in the world of CPG or uh, beverage yeah. to, to help support other brands with marketing or ideas or email campaigns. And so mm-hmm. I, I did that privately and uh, with my company Ryzen that I, you know, I just uh, exited from in a couple months ago, about six months ago. Um, so uh, he came to me with the packet. And, um, I thought it was great. I, I really enjoyed the effects of it. Like I enjoy the effects of felt. this, how I felt, right. but I think we needed to deliver it in a different way. Mm-hmm. And, um, then we brought, a uh, another friend of mine, Bill in the mix, who is uh, very familiar with this sort of thing. He works in packaging. So he, That's you know, he, he did all this. Yeah. yeah. So he understands the whole thing. And then, you know, about a year ago we got to our, uh, to our can here yeah. and then started testing yeah. formally launched uh, a couple months ago <coughs> the origin it's really funny um todd who is a jiu-jitsu guy the same gentleman that handed me that packet he was in japan training at night they beat him up drinking woke up <laughs> the next morning needing uh something to get on that plane and come back to the states and so he's a uh, by trade he's a dietitian and nutritionist and is very familiar with the world of electrolytes Mm -hmm. and he basically so matcha is also recommended yeah matcha tea is recommended for travel in japan that's an interesting i didn't know that yeah before you get on planes or while you travel yeah it's pretty cool yeah it's pretty neat so he uh and he was also familiar with the tea ceremony from one of his instructors in japan and so uh he basically created, so I'll say it like this. He created a formula that was an airborne, you know that, before you get on the plane? But the vitamin, you know, airborne? I've never taken it. Okay, so it's an airborne meets a Pedialyte meets matcha tea. That's mm. Tatsu tea in general. Oh, okay. So it's an uplifting drink. So he basically blended all this stuff together, got to that powder, had it, got on that plane, felt terrific. So... It, it started That's out as a uh, way of combating uh, a hangover. Yeah. 
And then um, we tested in athletics and it totally works. And we got the flavor profile to something that was uh, um, really good. And, yeah. you know, yeah, people can crush these things like, you yeah. know, go through that's a bunch the, of the time. That's the one thing I enjoy about it because like whenever I'm drinking something, like to me, it has to be light. Like if it's too much sugar or too much anything, I, I can only have like one. Mm -hmm. This I can just sip on. You could sip on while I'm, while I'm DJing, while I'm working, whatever. And it's like really nice because like it, it, you get the benefits plus you get the the lightness of it and how like it tastes good but it's also like it's not like crushing your taste buds yeah. you know so it's like really nice to have that great matcha some people don't like the flavor mm -hmm. some people think it tastes like grass and you know mm -hmm. that sort of thing so it took i mean it comes from it the earth so comes from the earth but we we didn't want to reinvent the wheel right we wanted to use what has been used for, you know, a couple thousand years, used by samurais. Literally, matcha was used by samurais for energy for battle and then focus for meditation. It's super interesting. Mm -hmm. So I want like I wanted that to be the base of what we're doing here. Right. You know, that is the base and the center of what we are too. You know, right. we're all you know, jujitsu people. And I, th I think it's super important. So it also, it took a little time to get it right, but, yeah. but worth it. So yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. Tea was born out of a, yeah. a, you know, to combat hangovers and to, uh, work for, you know, work. and now our, yeah. uh, our tagline is perform with purpose. So the whole point of it is to get you up and get you going towards, that. yeah, towards whatever that. purpose you're, yeah, uh, you're serving. Yeah, I'm like a spokesperson for hangover, so I'm like DJ <laughs> drink it all. So like, it's nice to have that and be able to recover. But and the funny part is that uh, this drink sells in nightlife. It's crazy. Yeah. So the yeah. more people kind of know that, like they mm -hmm. like I've heard stories where people are like drinking and then they'll have like two drinks. They'll be like, "Time out, give me one of those tattoos." All yeah. right, drink it so you have the uh, yeah. you know the vitamins you need, and you can't use it after the fact always, even though it's fine. Mm -hmm. But you use it during. You know, right. dur you know, yeah. what a, uh, let's say it's a pregame and then you drink. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We got some cool ideas in the works as well. And, oh, I like it. And, um, and so you have all these different like passions and, you know, <clears throat> you, you have, you, you're com kind of, you're combining careers essentially because like a lot of people dedicate their lives to certain things. You're able to just manage all of them. Leverage. Leverage. That's leverage. What I try to find. Yeah. Leverage. And it's like, so using your leverage and finding leverage. Um, how are you able to balance that as, you know, and how, as an entrepreneur, do you keep yourself motivated to keep pursuing these passions and, and maintain your leverage? Well, if you look at what I do with the gyms, with the way I invest with the tea company, the lifestyle, you know, if you will, like call it a lifestyle brand, mm. they're all the same. They all value health. They all value respect. They all value, you know, just uh, making better choices. That's a, that's another like big tag to, to th that stands out for us. Um, so like if you train jujitsu, you're bettering your life. You're bettering your life by fitness. You're getting some exercise. The community element. Right. Um, the fact that uh, you're making this jujitsu choice over no disrespect to the nightlife, but yeah. you know that nightlife can grab you. Mm -hmm. So. That's why it's balanced. So you can still yeah. night and day. Um, That's why it's balanced. Dude, too. you don't got to tell me. I'm very well aware of <laughs> the tolls it takes on your body. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but they share that. That's what they share in the background is, is you know, our brand message is generally a, a message of, of health. So I don't have to recreate that. You mm -hmm. know, it's also, you. this is also a product that I use. I use jujitsu. It's not like I'm selling right. something that I don't 100% believe in, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, so it's it's easier there. So the leverage right. is simple. Now I also look for a product that I could I could influence in the jujitsu world, something that would be good in the jujitsu world. So it's not right. super heavy lifting to introduce this thing that doesn't fit. Right, you're integrating everything together. A samurai fifteen hundred years ago drank a tea and you know yeah. took out a you know his enemy. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's kind of the point of you know jujitsu competition is that you have one job is to submit your opponent to win you know? yeah so they're not on they're not dissimilar you know right. so so it doesn't confuse me ever and i'm never i'm always on the one track I, right. I like i don't i don't want to let my adhd take over ever 
Yeah. You know, even though it will, it definitely will if you if you know me for long enough. That's yeah. why I said the interview during the morning time is way better. Yeah. You get me in the afternoon, all I want to do is train. So I just want to go right. do jujitsu like a little kid. Right. But yeah, so um when I get into things, I, I just make sure that I can like it's leverage on my side. I, it's controlled leverage. Right. So I always look for that sort of thing, whether I'm investing in another company. And the companies that I invest in are all better for you brands, right? more or less. Or, or tech wellness. companies that right. I can make a call and kind of help out. Right. And if I don't understand the vertical, if I don't understand, I don't, I'm not a part of it. I, you know, right. I'll promote it for a friend, but I don't necessarily like really dig in. Yeah. And it sounds like your experience, you're willing to at least learn and learn too. And so when you've been, um, you know, you, you've been doing, you know, you've been, you've been an entrepreneur for a long time. And I, after, you know, you've been doing jujitsu and the tea and, and, you know, you're an author and, and the black belts. And my I guess my question is to you is how do you keep yourself inspired and motivated constantly? Cause like, you know, you've been, you've been doing this for a while. Like, and you say you still love going to train like you're a little kid. How do you keep yourself like loving well, here what it is. you do? I, I yeah. explained this to somebody the other day. If, um, actually, I think I was talking to, to Justin Rosenberg. So if you guys don't know Justin, he's the CEO of Honey Grow. Um, amazing story. Super humble. I heard his interview here. He's super <laughs> humble. And he's a, he's a badass in business. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, we, 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 ch we chat all the time. <clears throat> I love his business. But um, um, we were chatting about like, all right, so you write a check to me as a billion dollars to fill, right? What would Phil do that day? I would still be walking with you to class with my jujitsu gi ready to rock. Right. So um, everything I'm doing, I would do anyway. I'm just, you know, I get to do another, have another adventure with some friends. Right. And I only do business with friends. I yeah, will no, not. I've noticed that. <clears throat> yeah, I won't. Yeah, Who I else are you going to trust? Right. And there needs to be that trust. So right. that's where I think companies sometimes fail because you don't have that initial trust in the beginning before anything happens so you've already vetted each other you've you already know that like no matter what if you walk away no one's writing a check for themselves you know mm. so i think that's hugely important but i'm also in a very like privileged unique experience because um like when we did this thing i knew exactly who would be a the best teammates on this one yeah so you built your rapport over years <clears throat> people and give them that call yeah um yeah, I, it's actually really great that you mentioned that, the whole trust thing. Um, how, because the way I'm trying to frame it is like, how do you know when you trust somebody when it goes to being in business or it goes to being um, just a friend? How do you know? You don't. Mm. So you go back to the gut feeling. You have a good sense based off of experience and length of time. You've been in a friendship. You always hear stuff in the background about other humans. <clears throat> What's funny is that like when you talk in jujitsu, it's very bizarre. <clears throat> You'll talk about somebody that's, you know, really good at jujitsu or notable. And the first thing they go, they say is like, yeah, he's a good guy. He's such a nice guy. Cause you wouldn't expect a jujitsu world champion to be a nice guy for like some reason. Humble and nice person. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that goes with it. So the humility allows you to be open mm. to anything. Right open the learning understanding know that you know just be humble man yeah or be humble or be humbled Facts. that's kind of what what goes on in jujitsu i like that tm <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's his that's 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 really i never said that before but it it, it really is the way business so the, the loft does that to people I'm, by the way just, <laughs> just kidding <laughs> the loft tm um this is a, a more treacherous business than jujitsu Right. For I sure. can fight over every, you know, people all day long, you know, but yeah. like being in other, these other industries, boy, is it, it can only a battle. Yeah, yeah. I can only yeah. imagine. Do you, so being humble is super important, not only in something I'm new in, I'm, I'm, I always say I'm the white belt in beverage right now, but I know the difference is I know I'll be a black belt one day, but I have to put the work in, I have to put the time in, I have to meet yeah. the people. I have to, you know, deliver the product. We have a lot right. to do. Yeah. So I have a white belt mindset no matter what I do. Even if I'm a six-degree black belt in jiu-jitsu, I still learn every day. Don't, right. don't ever let a belt 
Yeah, you, know. you put yourself somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, they say it only covers two inches of your, your ass. So, yeah. you know, uh, the rest you have to do. <laughs> I like that a lot. And uh, yeah. I don't like cursing, but nah, yeah. that is the quote. 1B, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and oh, yeah, 1B. Yeah, and so do you find, and it's kind of like, I guess it's like a, a simple question, but do you find enjoyment in, in that? And like going into something knowing you have so much to learn because yeah. a lot yeah. of people who are like they you know they think they know things and but do you find enjoyment in being in a place where you know that you're going to learn something yeah going back to your question like why do i wake up and do things pretty much it's like learning i want to learn the next thing you know mm. jiu-jitsu i want to learn the next move i want to see how it connects yeah so i like big giant puzzles nice that's and awesome that's just uh, a way that you can you know complete the puzzle and help other people yeah and so I assume like <laughs> you and your brother are one and the same and, and, you know, leaning on to like your, you know, your relationship with your brother. I know a lot of people, um, you have siblings who are different, but like you guys are seem like you're, you're different, but the same, um, and going through this journey, way of putting it. Yeah. And like going through this journey with your brother, um, is there anything that you guys have been able to learn about each your, like your relationship? Yeah. With I each listen other? to him all the time. Mm. I'm a bad judge of people. <laughs> Yeah, okay <laughs> he's a great judge of people yeah because i let things go too much because i'm like a yoga hippie i guess you could say yeah but um he can catch on to behaviors that later will result into like mm. untrustworthy things or you know like so he's really good at that so uh, mm. i just like don't even try anymore i listen to him i have a cousin and friends that are really good at it that's you know mm. that's low i i give people too much room to wiggle right <clears throat> Like you know. yeah it's something i i found myself struggling with and like that's why me and trevor's relationship works super well um mm -hmm. just because we i i look up look up to him and i ask him a lot of questions he'll ask me questions like and yeah i do i trust his judgment like we recently we had something where he was like dude just trust me on this i was like mm -hmm. okay and he was right so it's yeah. like you know it's good to trust people um and so like when it goes to obviously to, to you and your brother um and has there ever been times where you were right in a situation where he yeah you we, gave we, him we, advice we share the wins we mm -hmm. share the wins you know and he's like okay it'll take him a second he understands i can like we get to each other <clears throat> when we explain or yeah like he, yeah he, yeah we've man i don't even think i ever really had a fight with my brother my whole life you know um you know we'll we'll go back and forth with something come to a solution move move along right. to the next thing generally right. it's pretty easy yeah, yeah. exactly you guys combat on issues. You don't fight, right? <laughs> he said. Yeah, we'll go back and forth. Like we have to come up with a solution because it's an important right. thing, and yeah. we just drop all the I, I know better sort of mindset and mm. figure out the proper solution. Yeah, and this leads to my, you know, we'll wrap up in a bit, but I I really am curious because you o overarching theme, and we you actually gave me great advice on our phone call is like. You're, you're, as an entrepreneur, you're naturally a leader. You're put in leadership positions and, um, you've been able to do, you know, things with Tatsu T and, and, and balance MMA, um, you're a leader. And so as of having a team, um, and being the leader of a team, is there anything that you've, and I guess I know you don't like you saying that, but I guess my question is like, when it comes to being in a team aspect, is there anything that there's something you can give to someone or a piece of advice you can give to someone when it comes to being in a team that you've like really learned. Hmm. Well, like I said, I don't, I know I'm in leadership. Obviously I like being part of a team. That's why I'm in leadership. Yeah. And I think sometimes I lead better than other people because I listen and I want to know why. And sometimes it'll take time to process and after I'll deliver whatever that change needs to be or improvement rather. So instead of change, I, you know, I like to refer to the word improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and I do things for the group because people like they always say, oh, man, it must be nice not having a, um, a boss. I'm like, what are you talking about? I have a thousand in <laughs> Philly. They're all my students. You know, yeah, what I mean? exactly. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then my, you know, my boss in beverage are drinkers, yeah. are, are users, you know. So I always keep that in mind. It's super important to keep in mind, you know, and some, sometimes people get um, dragged to the dark side where, you know, ego eats them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, to shout out my, uh, my buddy Joe, I heard he, he did an Instagram live the other day. He said, uh, your ego is not your amigo. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. I love it. I TM, love it. I, no, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Joe Evangelisi. I'll tag him in there. But um, yeah, so I really like that. That So like when you walk in my studio, it says, you know, please leave your ego at the door, enter with a beginner's mind. So that's mm-hmm. our mantra. So the two things is like, you know, leave the ego here, um, <clears throat> which sometimes we forget, you know? Right. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and then the beginner's mind is that we can always learn. Yeah. So those are, those are, you know, two important things for the, uh, for that, for the gym life. Nice. And so like when it comes to like your, the way you go about life, is there, is that this a similar mantra? Yeah. Yeah. Leave your go out the door. And then... so I'll tell you why you can make all the money in the world and have all the friends in the world and everything you could ever possibly imagine. But if you, um, withdraw from reality withdraw from consciousness and just like what you're doing right now in this moment you take the wrong steps in the street you're gone you get right. hit by a car you're yeah. not paying attention so i think that's the most important thing is just being aware just being and that's kind of like you we, let's go back to yoga yeah generally what you'll see is that the ultimate goal is not doing a split a headstand that sort that's not yoga yoga is generally having the ability to witness having the ability to train yourself to witness, to see, to be aware. And, um, you know, like one, like I said, it only takes one moment of distraction or whatever to, uh, you know, I come from a car accident. So, right, yeah, you yeah. know, well, I wasn't driving, so it wasn't my, uh, yeah. my but, uh, you know, I experienced the other side of it. So yeah, when you were 17, yeah. so I think, yeah, ultimately is like, be aware, you know, and th- that's, that's the fun part. And no matter where you are in a journey, if you're having fun, it's a terrific journey, you know? Yeah. And ultimately, like I said, when I go back to things and, you know, I get a $90 billion check, I'm still going to be throwing my gi over my shoulder, going to mm. jiu-jitsu class, trying to help people and um, doing my yoga practice. It, uh, it really just that. comes down to both of those things. So I'm doing what I like doing. I love that. That's awesome. And I will wrap up with this, but um, <clears throat> when you're, you're speaking to a fresh new student, um, who's getting into jujitsu, getting into, you know, any type of, you know, I, I guess we're related to jujitsu, but when you're meeting a new student and they're, they're, they're fresh and they're, they're, they're excited about the world. Um, what's like, um, something you give them that they can take through that throughout their journey. That's something that's really been important to you that you've learned on your journey. Um, I tell them, I go, are you ready to beat all of your friends up and dominate them all? <laughs> Welcome to jujitsu. No, <laughs> um, and I try to impart exactly what I just said, mm-hmm. you know, like enjoy the lifestyle because sometimes you get a white belt. They're so excited about getting their blue belt, purple belt, all the... enjoy the white belt journey, enjoy the blue belt journey. So the belts go white, blue, purple, brown, black. You have a little bit of time. If you're a good jujitsu guy, it's more or less 10 years to black, more or less. Enjoy the journey. So enjoy the first bit of your curriculum, the second part, the third. Don't try to race to the next thing. That's the same thing with beverage. Everybody's like, are you in Whole Foods? I'm enjoying being on Frankfurt Avenue. I'm enjoying sending cases across the country, having people enjoying it. We're very comfortable in this stage. We'll go to the next stage. I know I'll get there, but it's just one thing at a time. So that's what I say. Just be a little patient with with your journey because... um, in jujitsu, you have to, before you kick everyone's butt, you have to understand, see my hand tapping out. You right. have to learn how to tap out uh, thousands of times before you actually. So that's the biggest lesson, having the yeah. ability and the humility to go. <clears throat> what was my quote again? The, um, <laughs> what, the, we had a few quotes. Be that, humble or be humbled. Uh, be humble or be yeah. humbled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you could choose to be humble or you could choose maybe you're not right. going to choose a guy like my brother helping you with your humility product project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did like that. No, but that does happen to students, man. Yeah. They get like some people that are all, you know, they're trying to hurt. You'll get someone way higher. Maybe like the kindest person in the world that'll teach you a lesson you will never forget. And you don't want that lesson. Like you really right. don't. Right. Someone that can make you feel, you know, permanently claustrophobic the rest yeah. of your life. I like that. Yeah, that, it's, <laughs> it's true. And dude, I, that applies to so many things. Like, yeah. especially like in my DJ journey, it was really cool because yesterday was the first 
So March 3rd was the one year anniversary of me getting my first shot in nightlife in Philly. Boom, congrats. And I sent it to the guy, Jason Weiss, who gave me my first opportunity. And I said, I screenshotted the Snapchat I put up on my schedule. And I said, I just wanted to thank you for giving me that shot. And like, you know, it's just like one thing I always try to do is be very aware and like be also understanding of like, I'm very blessed to have opportunities that I have. Like I'm having my first New York show next, next year or next month. Nice, man. And it's like, I always think about me playing at the first dive bar I was ever at. And I always keep that in my mind just because it's like, I was told very early on in my journey is like the people you meet on the way up are the same people you meet on the way down. Oof, so yeah. trying to, be kind and nice to every single person you come across no matter what is like is always super important to me and just because mm -hmm. because i'm fully aware that everything that you've received can be taken away instantly like you said you're not paying attention you're getting hit by a car it's like that's a lot of um something i try to look at and i always try to avoid people who have egos just because i get like oddly annoyed by it you know it's it just, turns people off right away too. yeah i think it's and I, that's something i've learned about myself and and um, yeah, no, I, I try to be as, as humble as possible, grateful as possible, and just super like, anytime I can give someone a chance to do something, I just try to do that, you know? And that's just like, because I just, I mean, you, you see the opposite side of it. For, you you know, know where I used to, where, I mean, not to go too long here, but um, <coughs> my dad, rest in peace, mm. um, entrepreneurial guy, tough dude, just like my brother. He's, he, right. You met my brother, you'll, you'll know what my dad was like a little bit. But he always said hi to everyone, whether it was, you know, someone that would be considered lower in life, mm -hmm. higher up. He treated everyone the same, you know, yeah. like I would remember going into an office to the secretary. How are you doing? How's your hut? How? And then talking to this like big CEO the same exact way. Mm -hmm. So I always thought that was cool. I think it's the I think that's the most genuine form of of humanity. My grandpa who passed away last year. Rest in peace. Um. He taught me that, and um, so we were at a restaurant the other day, and and um, my I asked the waitress. I always ask the waitress what their name is. My like, and whether I'm at a meeting or I'm at whatever. And my girlfriend was like, "Why do you always do that?" And I was like, "Well, because my pop taught me that. My pop always, uh, he always asked the waitress for their name, and always had a conversation with them, always chopped it up with them. And I was super young at the time, so I didn't really understand it, but I picked up on it. And after he passed away, I um. I really try to live on through that, through through well, him. You have a podcast where you're doing that in the long form, so right? It's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and yeah, and so like, it's just been really cool to to be able to live that legacy on. It's something so small, but it's something that makes me feel good after I do it because, I mean, odds are that you know, with the, every with all the egos in the world, like a lot of people who work in, in the industry don't really like. They don't get asked how their day is, or they don't, they don't get asked what their name is, you know. So I always try to make it a point to ask how their name is, how they're doing, just because it just creates a better environment for everyone involved. And like, and my pop did it, so I'm like, I want to live through him with that, you know. I find that stuff really cool. But um, yeah, I guess one final question is, uh, I mean, I can ask you one, what's next? But you know, I know that you're on the road to a billion, you know. <laughs> um, but I guess I will ask you. So what is next? For Phil, what's something like that you're excited about? What's, you know, what part of life are you looking forward to now? Um, <clears throat> always enjoy the time with the family. I really enjoy that. <clears throat> um, and, um, you know, just proceeding with these businesses and, yeah. you know, having fun with my friends. So yeah, that's awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Someone asked me yesterday um, what my five-year plan was. And I'm like, dude, I'm just a boy. I'm just yeah. like, I'm just doing, I'm just going day by day. I'm just trying to be consistent as possible. And That's I'm, good. You're doing the right thing, man. I love this. I appreciate that. Well, listen, Phil, thank you so much for coming on. Um, this was, this was great. I feel like I got a lot of knowledge from this. And honestly, just being able to like chop it up with you again. Like I always enjoy it. Like I, I, I was like, <clears throat> it was funny. We were in your office and we were like hanging out for a while and you're like, like you like it in here, don't you? I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I could like chill and focus. So, uh, but now, dude, I'm really great. It's a relaxing place. That yeah, studio. it's nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then and honestly, with everything with balance and tattoo tea, like I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes, and I'm excited to help you out along the way in any way possible that I can. Um, but yeah, no, this is a great episode, and thank you for coming on. Thanks, brother. Of course. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm Kev Nichols. That's Phil Migley Reese. You got it, Migley Reese. Peace, guys. <laughs>